Pastor John here, inviting you to join my wife Denise and myself as we plunge into the depths of God's Word, growing ever closer to Him. I pray that He gives us all eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. Now join us in our service already in progress. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome back to the channel. Right. So glad you could join us today. Thank you for that. God bless you. Open with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians. We're going to be reading 2 Corinthians 10. We're going to be reading verses 3 through 6. This mic's a little bit on the hot side. And just back that guy down a little bit right there. That's better. All right. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord. I humble myself in your sight. Holy Spirit, I am completely, totally, and utterly dependent upon you. I cannot do this without you, Lord. I ask you to breathe life upon this word. Anoint these lips of clay that I might speak your words and your words alone. And give us all eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. And we give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to look at three words from this text this morning. Three words. We're just going to look at them really quickly. The first one is mighty. The Greek word that's used here is dunatos. And it shares the same root word as my favorite Greek word here, dunamis. So we know dunamis is the miraculous power of God in abundance. Well, dunatos comes from the same word that that word comes from. It means <clears throat> powerful or capable, mighty, mighty man, power or strong. So the weapons are, are, of our warfare are so mighty, so much more than that word mighty, if you put all of those things into it. The second one, B, is pulling down. He says, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That phrase, pulling down, is one word in the Greek. It is katharesis. And it means demolition, extinction, destruction, or pulling down. So, we're talking about the obliteration of a stronghold. An absolute obliteration of it. And C is a stronghold itself. Now, a stronghold is a military term. The Greek word is ochuroma, and it means a fortified location with the idea of holding safety, a castle, or I would say a garrison, which would be a very good description of what a stronghold is. There are strongholds that get into our lives by the enemy. But I want you to think about this. He says in the opening text, and by the way, that this is the title of my message is The Weapons of Our Warfare. He says, though we walk after the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. I want to show you this morning a few carnal weapons. Nine millimeter. Everybody loves and knows this one for sure. Twelve gauge pump shotgun, the scariest sound an intruder will ever hear inside of a house. Ouch. 
And last of all, the trusty AR-15. These are carnal weapons. But our weapons, the weapons of our warfare, are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are much more powerful than the AR-15, the 9mm, or the 12-gauge pump shotgun. Glory to God. Move this out of my way. And let's put this back where it belongs. See, here's the difference. When you have a spiritual problem, you have to fight a spiritual problem with spiritual weapons. You cannot fire bullets at a spirit. Oh, you can fire them at them, but it won't do you any good. Because spirits are air. Literally, air. Wind. Breath. The Greek word for spirit is pneuma, which means breath, wind, or a blast. The bullets will pass right through them and do no good. You have to have spiritual weapons to fight spiritual beings, to pull down spiritual strongholds. You have to have weapons that are spiritual. So what are our weapons? Number one, well, before we get into number one, let me say this. Dunatos. That word, dunatos, the mighty, they are mighty through God. Miraculously powerful they are. I sound like Yoda. Our weapons contain the dunamis power of God. They are mighty through God. So we should never us underestimate their effectiveness. You know, a, a big problem that's going on in the Middle East right now is that that war is being fought with bullets. That is a spiritual problem. Yes, Israel has every right in the world to defend themselves physically. But the problem is not a physical problem. It is a spiritual problem, and it needs to be fought with spiritual weapons. But what are our spiritual weapons? Number one. Number one the greatest weapon that is ever given to us is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus was given to us to overcome the enemy. Revelation 12, 11. It says, And they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. The blood of Jesus is alive. Now, I'm going to share something with you um, a testimony from Ron Wyatt, the man who claims to have found the Ark of the Covenant in Israel. Now, he has gone on to be with the Lord for many, many years ago that he passed. But he claims that he found the Ark of the Covenant in the grotto of Jeremiah, which would have been in the hill called Golgotha, a place of a skull. And it was directly underneath of one of the crosses post holes. And when that when that earthquake happened, there was a crack that ran down 18 feet through rock right over top of the place where the Ark of the Covenant was hidden. And that there was blood found on the one side of the Ark of the Covenant of the mercy seat that blood was never put on before. And he had this blood taken to someone to analyze it. And they said, where did you get this blood? There was some, I, I'm not going to attempt to try to tell you the things that were with this blood, except for this one thing. They said, this blood is alive. 2,000 years. And that blood was still alive. That blood is still alive today. And I'm going to tell you right now that demonic spirits are terrified of the blood of Jesus. You start playing songs about the blood of Jesus and demons don't want to be anywhere within a mile of it. I was taking a young man through uh, training on deliverance before the actual deliverance. And I have my phone in my pocket playing songs about the blood of Jesus. Can you turn that off? And I'm like, why? Because it's bothering me. I'm like, it's not bothering you. It's bothering the passenger. I'll turn it down, but I won't turn it off. 
When we do deliverance with people, we try to keep songs about the blood of Christ plain because demons are terrified because that was that blood that defeated them. Number two, what are our weapons? Your testimony. We just said it. The, these are they that overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That word testimony in Greek is marturia. And it means evidence given, judicially or generally. A record, a report, a testimony, or a witness. Now how do you overcome by this witness, by this testimony? And by the way, this is what we mean when we say witnessing to people. It's not just about the words that's coming out of our mouth, but the actions that we are portraying. Are people seeing Christ in us? Are we being a good witness for Him? Now, how does it make you feel when somebody gets up and starts telling you about the miracles of God that they have seen God perform? Does it get you excited? Does it get you pumped up? That is how it helps you to overcome. How can you tell about what God did for you in the past and then stand and let God fail for you in the per present. And it's not God failing, it's us failing. It's us failing to give Him room to be God. Yes, it gets you pumped up mentally and spiritually. Now I'm going to tell you about somebody who gave a testimony and helped them overcome. 1 Samuel 17 <clears throat> this is when David was about to go face Goliath. In verse 34, it says, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took the lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him, and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. You can't brag on God like that and then fail. You can't. God's not going to embarrass himself. Glory to God. Number three, our weapon. Our third weapon, the Word of God. The Word of God is there for us to use as a weapon. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That word quick does not mean fast. When he says the word of God is quick and powerful, that word quick means alive. Who knows what quicksilver is? Anybody? Mercury. They call it quicksilver because it's like it's alive. The stuff will move around at room temperature. It's liquefied. So they call it quicksilver. That's one of the nicknames for mercury. Um... So the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Um, Paul likens the Word of God to a sword in Ephesians chapter 3, verses, uh, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6, 10 through 18. I believe that's right. Um, where he talks about the armor of God. He likens the Word of God to a sword. Okay? So, the Word of God is a weapon. How did Jesus overcome Satan? How did Jesus defeat Satan in Matthew chapter 4? He used the word of God against him. Matthew 4, verse 47. Now this is when the devil came to him and tempted him and said, If you're the Son of God, then command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. 
So when Satan tempts us, we need to be prepared with an answer from the Word of God. We need to be prepared to give an answer out of God's Word. Smite him with the Word of God. He doesn't like that. Number four, prayer. You know, the word pray is found in the Bible 313 times. Prayed, 65 times. Prayer, 114 times. Prayers, 24 times. Prayest, 2 times. And prayeth, 7 times. For, oh, and praying, 20 times. For a grand total of 545 times. Folks, if something is mentioned that many times in the Bible, you need to pay attention to it. Because it's something very important. Um, the disciples, they could have come to Jesus and asked him, teach us how to raise the dead, cast out devils, give us a seminar on opening blind eyes or, or healing the sick or cleansing the lepers. They could have asked him all kinds of things, give us a seminar on walking on water. No, they came to Jesus and they said, teach us to pray. They didn't even ask him to teach them to preach. They asked him to teach us to pray. They knew how important prayer was. Luke 11, 1, it says, and, they came to and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. So prayer is one of our weapons of our warfare. And lastly, and I'm sure there's more, but lastly in this message is the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is one of our most powerful weapons against the enemy. Mark 16, 7 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. See, when we invoke the name of Jesus, things have to happen. Something has to happen if we invoke the name of Jesus. Uh, why is that? Philippians 2.9 says, Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things of earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we have the blood of Christ. We have the name of Jesus. We have prayer. And what did I miss here? Your testimony are all of our weapons. And if you have the Holy Ghost, you need to be praying in tongues as well with that prayer part. Because when we don't know what to pray or how to pray, our spirit man can pray for us. What can I do? Number one is to plead the blood of Jesus. You should plead the blood of Jesus over yourself, over your family, over your property, over your vehicles should be putting a Jesus Christ bloodline around yourself, your family, your property, and commanding that demons cannot cross that bloodline. That's number one. Number two, testify. We, we need to be doing more of this. If God has blessed you, if God has done something for you, if you've been in a situation that looked horrible, but you went through it and came out on the other side and realized, wow, this worked out for my good, like the Bible says, then you need to tell about it. Come to church and tell about it. I was at a church one time, and there was a certain person every Sunday had a testimony. Well, the pastor stopped taking testimonies from people because he was the only one that was ever had a testimony. Then people were complaining, why is it always him? Why, why only him? Why only that person? 
I hope to never be in that situation. You know, instead of asking, why is it always him? Yeah, that's a good question to ask. Why is it always him? Why is it that God's always blessing you? Ask them. Maybe that person put himself in a position to be blessed. We shouldn't be upset when somebody gets blessed and we didn't. Find out what gets them blessed. You want to be like somebody that's getting good things, then see what they're doing. And then maybe it'll be you that's getting blessed. Maybe it'll be you that has a testimony every Sunday. Um, oh yes, and that testimony, 100% of the time, has to point to Christ. can be all about you, me, 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 my, 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 look at me. No, that's not what it's about. It ain't about you. It ain't about me. It's about Him. And that ultimately, whatever your testimony is, needs to point to Christ. Number three, you need to know God's Word. If God's Word is your weapon, then you need to become familiar with it. Example. If I give this 9mm to somebody and say, here, here's a weapon. You see this in movies all the time. The protagonist in the movie will He'll say, here, take this, protect yourself. This person's never held a gun in their life. You're not going to tell them anything about gun safety? You're not going to tell them how to, how to chamber around? You're not going to tell them how to clear a malfunction? You're not going to tell them anything about it. Just hand it, here it is, use it, and they don't know how. They don't even know how to get a sight picture. And you're going to hand them a weapon to use. Become familiar with the Word of God. You become familiar with the Word of God, know what it says, and know how to use it. And if you have a question, ask someone in leadership. They will be more than happy to help you with it. So know God's Word. And I'll give you an example of this. This very scripture that we're talking about here. I use this when a, when a, if, a, if a thought comes to my mind, I will out loud, I will say, because remember, God created the heaven and earth with His words. We are like God in that respect. What we say that comes out of our mouth, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And lastly on that note, the devil can't read your mind. You have to say things out loud when you're speaking to a devil. God can hear your thoughts. The devil can't. So you, what I'll do when a thought comes to my mind, and I, I will say, I cast down that imagination in the name of Jesus. I take that thought captive and I bring it under the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus. That is an example of how you can use the Word of God to your advantage to overcome temptation. Number four, pray. Pray, 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 pray. I cannot say that enough. Pray. Watch and pray. When, when Anytime you see watch and pray in the Bible, that word watch means to stay awake, to keep a vigil. So, watch and pray. Stay awake. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary the devil. As a roar and lion, lion goeth about seeking whom he may devour. If anybody knew anything about staying vigilant, it was Peter, because he failed miserably about it in, in, in the Gospels. Now, when you pray, pray in the Spirit. Don't just pray in your own language. Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. Do both. Romans 8, 26. i got to change the toner in my printer, folks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Romans 8, 26. Um, we might not know how to pray or what to pray about something. Well, Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercessions with groanings 
which cannot be uttered. He is talking about praying in the Spirit here. The Spirit makes intercession, that's prayer, with groanings which cannot be uttered. He's got to be talking about speaking in tongues here, folks. So pray in the Spirit. And lastly, invoke the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. In Acts 16, 18, Paul has been grieved by a damsel who had a spirit of divination in her. And she was going around, hey, these men are the servants of the Most High God who show us the way of salvation. Well, in Acts 16, 18, it says, And this did she many days. <clears throat> but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now, I just want to make sure that I say this one little caveat with this. You start casting devils out, you better make sure you know Christ for yourself. There were seven sons of Sceva, and they took it upon themselves to take cast a devil out of somebody, and they said, We adjure thee by Jesus, who Paul preacheth. And that person with the Spirit in them said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And leaped on the seven of them and sent them wounded and naked. I think they were naked too. But they were wounded. They sent them down running down the street. You better know who you are in Christ when you're doing dealing with devils, though. But invoke the name of Jesus. Find up these devils. You got somebody that, that torments you at work? Just very quietly, where they can't hear you, say, I bind up that spirit that's manifesting in that person right now in the name of Jesus. You will be amazed. Folks, um... I would be remiss if I did not tell you there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Could you play something for us, please? <clears throat> if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, I'm going to ask you to say a prayer with me today. Maybe you have and you've slipped away. Today's your day too. Say that prayer with me. Mean it in your heart. Don't just say it, but mean it. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Say this prayer with me. Father God, I am a sinner. Be merciful to me, Lord. I know that my sin has separated me from you. But I also know that Jesus died on a cross to take away my sin. And he rose again from the dead three days later. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I repent of my sins. I turn away from them. And I turn to you. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart, Lord, and make me a new creation. I ask you to be my Lord, be my Savior, and be my soon coming King. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, if you said that prayer this morning and you really meant it in your heart, well, God bless you and welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. You are now my baby brother or my baby sister. And there is a party that is happening in the heavens right now. The Word of God says that the angels of God rejoice over one sinner that repents. Folks, if you haven't done so already, I'm going to ask you to subscribe to the channel. Um, share our videos with your fan. Give us a thumbs up. Until next time, God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you real soon. Hallelujah.